Hello, guys. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Friends in Vet Med with Karis and I. Today, we have some more guests because um, this episode, we're going to try to gear it towards kind of like a tribute to the island since we're not there. And this is going to kind of be for people who are looking at SGU and if they want to go to SGU or also the term one and two students who are at SGU or FTV2 um, who are at SGU and haven't made it to the island yet. Um, our great and lovely guests, Brittany Kilgore and Elizabeth McGarvey are going to uh, kind of give us some island insight because from what I know, from Brittany and her YouTube videos. She goes all over the place. And I know that Liz, she was my pause facilitator and she has all the gems in regards to where to go for this, that, and whatever else you need. So I'm gonna go ahead and let them introduce themselves and we're gonna get started. So whomever picks. So you guys can like share like what term you're in or like where you are now and like, yeah. Okay, I'll go. Um, my name is Elizabeth McGarvey. Um, I go by Liz a lot. I'm in term six, so this would have been my last term on the island, so I'm very sad that I'm not there. Um, I'm currently in Westbrook, Maine instead, which is about as opposite as you could get. <laughs> <laughs> Got a lot of ice and snow, so I'm very excited to be here today, though. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And my name is Brittany Kilgore. As I was introduced, um, I'm currently in Grenada. I'm only here for a few more weeks, but I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I'm currently a term five student. So it's my second to last term on the island. Oof, wow, that's a lot. Okay, so Liz, you are in your sixth term. So whenever we had to evacuate island, that means you were fourth? Yep, I was term four. Okay, and Brittany, that means you were third. Yep. Okay, so with that transition off of the island, how did you guys adjust from like that trying to get everything done at the end of the, in the middle of the term to like a full-blown online term, the following term, like your term four, Brittany, and then Liz, your term five. How did you guys adjust to that? Um. Well, for me, like term three wasn't horrible I think it was more so like just trying to stay on track because like I knew I was going to be home with distractions um I think in term three I probably studied more than I ever have studied before but then like coming into term four I think I had kind of got like relaxed at home and it wasn't as good um I know like probably Liz is going to piggyback and say term five was like rough because I'm in term five strictly online now and so but I'll like let her like speak on that <laughs> yeah I think term four wasn't too bad it felt like we were all just kind of trying to finish it out um be home get sit be safe um then term five started and I the biggest thing that I noticed was I just didn't have the motivation that I had at the beginning of all the other terms everything just felt really mundane and weird um and for me pause is always a big thing that helps kind of re-kick my motivation and to be doing uh, that online yeah it's not the same you can't make that personal connection um studying has been hard I think too because I'm a big group studier same. so we've had to kind of adjust what we do and I've done a lot more solo studying um I've done fine academically on my grades. I do worry sometimes how much I'm retaining. I think that that's the other thing. Um, but I go to clinicals in a couple of months. So hopefully yeah. I'm put to the test and it goes well. I'm sure, I'm sure it'll go fine. great. Yeah, excited. Um, so I wanted to ask Brittany, cause you said you're gonna be leaving. I, you're going to Grenada currently and I follow you Instagram. So like I see like when you got there, like, so you weren't there that long, right? Yeah. I came Why? for like half a term. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, like, yeah. Is because just because you wanted to be there, or just like, um, a little of both. So like, I missed it a lot. I was trying to come back last term when we were online, but it was just Grenada. Like Grenada had opened its borders, but American mm -hmm. Airlines had cut a lot of the flights, and even JetBlue. But I'm closer to the American hub, so I was like, by the time they opened, it was late October, and I was like, it's not worth it to go back for six weeks. So I just waited yeah. till this term. But term five is a term when you can start doing surgery and stuff. So you would have normally done it, and I have like a very good 
like relationship with my clinic. And so even though it's not like required, like in term six, I know they would give me that experience that on the island, there's very, very minimal to none. So Mm -hmm. I came down here to like have my time outside of my parents' house, um, come back to visit Grenada. And I also knew that potentially if we are online again, this could be my last time. So I was trying to get some last minute things that like I really care about in the event we don't come back. Yeah. Okay. Oh, don't say that. Don't put that out there. Yeah, <laughs> no. that, just, that, 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 that hurt my heart here. Yeah. Like, but I probably I'm definitely going to, yeah, I'm, even if they don't open it for like in-person classes, I'll probably go back just like a exactly. lot of people have. Yeah. They're trying to accommodate. Like I know Liz, you leave tomorrow to go um for your, um what is it? Clinical, it's a rotate, it's a surgery rotation. Right. Yeah, it's like surgery wet lab. So my term five, because we were evacuated for that too, we also missed surgery. And um, kind of like Brittany, I've been really fortunate that I had a clinic and a professor, or not a professor, but a doctor who has been like a professor who took me under her wing. So I've gotten to do some really cool surgeries that I actually probably wouldn't have been able to do if we were still on island. Mm-hmm. Um, but that being said, I miss the academic training. So it's, you know, a little different. Um, so they, the school has three groups of us going out to the Oquendo center in Las Vegas to do a surgical wet lab. And we're doing, you get to do, you're part of three spays and three neuters. So you're a lead surgeon, assistant surgeon, and anesthetist, um, with a group of, there's three of you total. So you do six surgeries. We're also going to do a large animal equine wet lab, but I don't know what that's going to look like. Um, I don't think that's surgical. That would be really hard. And then we're going to do something with goats, but I don't know what that is. That sounds okay. fun. That's good. I'm cool. so excited because yeah. I mean, I'm excited to get the academic experience and I'm also really excited. I'm not going to lie to just see some of my peers and my classmates because that honestly has been one of the things that has just made me so sad not being with them. Yeah. yeah, it's one thing to talk over like a computer screen or a phone screen, but to actually have that interpersonal vibe going on is different. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so this is the last question before we transition into the beautiful island all and all that it entails. Is. Yeah. So um, ultimately, as far as like after you guys graduate and attain your DVM, what is it that you guys would want to do career-wise? Brittany, I think you want to do something with cats from what I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like, you know, like I am 100% like a cat person. Like, I don't want to be like the crazy cat lady, but like <laughs> I work at an all cat clinic now and I really like it. And I still like dogs, but like working, I like the cats and I would do exotics. Um, Long term, I want to open my own clinic. I know that won't happen probably in the first five years out of school. And I'm also getting my acupuncture license. So maybe even doing like the holistic part. Like I've really looked into getting my master's in that. So it's like another thought, but definitely the all cats. That's yes. like the high thing. <laughs> Wild. <laughs> I've ruled out dogs. Like no dogs, no large animals. <laughs> like, uh-huh. Okay. I mean, that's good. You have a, a you're solid. You're saying you know what you want to do. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Liz? <laughs> um, I Oh, and Liz, also, where are you going for your clinical year? I'm going to Virginia, Maryland. Oh, so cool. Mm-hmm. Cool. I'm so excited. I think it's gonna be great. Um, there's like a group of eight of us, I think, too. It's a really big group. Oh wow. Oh wow. Yeah. So it'll be nice to be around some SGU faces. Yeah, y'all gonna run the place. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. But I've also heard the Virginia, Maryland students are super nice and welcoming, and uh-huh. I'm really excited to meet them. So yeah. Good. Um, what do I want to do after I graduate? I guess I haven't a hundred percent decided. Um, definitely small animal. I do have a big interest in hospice and quality of life. Um, so I guess my career, I kind of want it to be twofold. In the beginning, I want to do more preventative medicine. I want to be able to go to communities where veterinary care access isn't as readily available. Mm -hmm. Um, I would really like to, whether that's in the United States, because I know there's a lot of communities that need it, um, or abroad, either way. Um, And then eventually, I would like my second half of my career to transition into some more of the hospice care, um, euthanasia, because I just think that that's something that's really underrated sometimes. And mm-hmm. I think that it's really important to understand that human animal bond. Um, 
and be, be not just there for the pets, but also there for the owners. You know, it's easy. I think sometimes from our perspective to be like, this animal needs to cross the rainbow bridge, but that's not always as easy for the human. And so if I can kind of be there to help counsel them while keeping their pet comfortable, free of pain, having a good quality of life and have the owner eventually come to terms with it on their own. I think it just makes for a healthier experience overall. Mm-hmm. That's that is cool. pretty nice. That's good at looking at not only just the pet's well-being, but also the owners. Because I don't think a lot of times doctors think about, well, I mean, I just euthanize, like they euthanize and then they go on to the next case. Cause like, I know like that's usually what happens at my job. They, they, they put on the empathy phase and then like they're moving forward. So that mm-hmm. would be, that would be really, really nice. People will appreciate you greatly for that. Yeah. yeah it's so so what would that look like? Because I'm just curious, because like that's my experience too, as far as like euthanasia and uh, quality of care appointments, just like a little, like, are you want to do this or you want to, don't want to do this? So like, was that just being like having a special department of like where you work, like has hospice care, like dedicated to geriatric patients or like what would that yeah, so I would kind of, wherever I'm working, I would just try to make it known in the community that I'm willing okay, to yeah. work with people. Yeah. Uh, you know, what is their pain level? What are they suffering from? Are they having a hard time with their mobility versus are they having a hard time breathing? I think also it depends on what their state is when you have to try to counsel people that maybe their their transition across the Rainbow Bridge might need to happen sooner rather than later. Um, but I've been listening to a lot of podcasts about it lately. Um, Vet Girl on the Run is one. Okay, about to write these down. Yeah, it, she's great. They're great. And they talked about one specifically about euthanasia and that issue sometimes that that owners and clients can have where we're looking at it from one side and that's what our, we're training to do. So obviously we do that. And I think sometimes it's really easy to forget the human side of it. And there was one episode where it was a technician after the doctor left and had said, I think your cat needs to be put down. And the owner was like, no, I'm against it. And I think they said that the vet kind of got upset. Then the tech was like, can I just ask why? I'm just really curious. And it ended up ultimately being, he was a Holocaust survivor. And so he had a fundamental issue with choosing death for another living thing because of his experience in life. And that's just humbling to me because you have to understand wow. where those people are coming from. Mm-hmm. You know, I had my own personal experience where I had, it was a kidney cat again, and we were trying to convince the owner it was probably time to say goodbye. And I won't say her name for privacy reasons, but I ended up talking to her as a, from a, an assistant point of view and she ended up finding out she was in kidney failure herself. Mm-hmm. And so she was having a really hard time euthanizing her cat because she saw a lot of herself in her cat. Right. Yeah. And once I was able to understand it, it didn't, it didn't mean I agreed, but it it meant that we could have a more open and honest communication, keep Mm -hmm. that cat comfortable and get her to a place where she was ready to say goodbye. Right. And if you understand where the client's coming from, there's like less judgment on like towards them. So we can actually like work together and understand each other. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to pivot and um, talk about now we're going to get into um, Grenada and ask you guys about your experiences, like different things. So like, I guess we'll start off light. I want to know um, your fave beaches. Like, where? what's your go-to beach? I feel, like, very stereotypical saying Grand Dance. But like Grand, Dance. Dance. <laughs> Grand Dance is one of my favorite ones. But I do also really like Magazine Beach, which it's, like, one of those, like, you hear about it, but some people don't know how to get to it. And so it's, like, behind the airport down this really steep hill. But then it's, like, nice once you get there. It's, like, shaded and, like, the beach is hardly never anyone there so that was another yeah. one I really liked it too. is that the beach that um they did the independence celebration at cares that's groom's beach oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't I've never been to magazine beach okay it's nice yeah. you should go <laughs> <laughs> I like both of those I think grand dance for me is a favorite just because it holds so many positive memories uh-huh. that's you know esters the bar and oh, esters. that's where we go after midterms and quizzes and finals and so that's where i hold most of my memories with my classmates right um but lasa i guess at the northern end is also really pretty what um, is it called lasa i guess i think is how you pronounce it I mm-hmm. totally and lavara beach on the and north Lavara, side too. yeah they're just like it's so pretty in that area it's a different I'm going to mix it up. It's 
it's not the Caribbean Sea. It's the it's the Atlantic side. Atlantic. So it it looks different, but it's still mm. so pretty. Huh. Cool. Is that like where the turtles nest, like the Atlantic side, or yeah, that's Lavira? Okay. So I know, like Brittany, you had a car, so like it's probably easy for you to just like jump. Like I'm gonna go to the north side today, but like I don't know, Liz, did you have a car? Is that how you'd get around and like go like the opposite end? Yeah, I rented. Okay. I would highly recommend. I know right. I, 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 can get I also car. did get around like with the bus. Like I didn't get a car until like the end of my first year, so I did foundations. Mm -hmm. I did turn one. And then mm -hmm. I got a car. So mm -hmm. the first time I ever went around the island, and I went around on a bus. I like, like the, figured the out Grenadian the local bus. buses. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I went into town. I found out which buses I need needed to ride. I don't like necessarily recommend that. I'm really good with directions and stuff, mm -hmm. and like I don't mind talking to people. <laughs> yeah. But like like Liz said, I would recommend a car. Like if you're gonna be like that ex like adventurous person, like get a car. So mm -hmm. it's just fun. We're do freedom. Exactly. Yeah. How did you guys go about finding and like renting a car? So would you recommend renting over like finding like a little cash car and buying one? Like how did you guys come to terms with figuring that out, I guess? Yeah, I rented and I came to that decision based mostly on the fact that I absolutely know nothing about cars. <laughs> so I knew if I tried to buy like a beater car or a cheap car, I wouldn't know what I was looking at for like what's a good one versus what's a bad one. Um, I always worry about like, if I'm going to try to pull the wool over my eyes when they're like, this needs to be fixed and that needs to be fixed. And I would just be like, okay. Um, and I like the fact that the person I rented from, if anything went wrong with my car, they would just take it and bring me another one while they fixed it. Mm. So I didn't have to worry about that. Um, and that did happen my last term there. My battery was starting to go and wasn't my problem. They could just deal with it. Um, when I needed new tires, same thing. I didn't have to worry about it. I didn't have to worry about registering it. I didn't have to go in town. Um, I know some people prefer to buy just because I think yeah, I it did. can save mm -hmm. you money. But yeah, I bought. Yeah. So I think it's just preference and comfort level. I don't think there's like a right or a wrong answer. Okay. Yeah. I, that's what I tell anyone when people reach out to me, like about buying cars. I like try to give them the pros and cons of each, which I tell like everyone, like what Liz says, like you're not like, responsible for it because like you're just renting it versus like with me like like she said I had to go to town to get the registration I have to have insurance but like you said like you save a little money at the end like when you leave the island you sell it and like maybe that's a few thousands in your pocket like as you're getting ready to go off to clinicals that you can use towards something um I do kind of know not a lot about cars but enough like not for someone to just get over me and like it surprises like especially like you think a lot of men are in the like car field so like sometimes when I start like naming all the parts they're like okay she knows what she's talking about so I can't lie to her like mm -hmm. so I think it just depends like how much you want to deal with or like not be bothered by mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay interesting Makes sense I may have to rent because I don't know anything about cars <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, do, nothing. Say, you know just talk to people who have rented and um, that's how I found the person I rented from because mm -hmm. word of mouth is really big on that island I feel like in reputation mm -hmm. Um, and I've got a couple of really good names that I can give you. Okay, yeah, I'll ask you. I have to weigh out my pros and cons because I know with renting, it's a little bit more expensive each month, um, in regards to when you just buy the car. But I mean, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Well, and you might not <laughs> save that much personally because you're only going to be back for a little bit versus like, yeah, time. that's true. Uh, that harsh <laughs> reminder. Um, go ahead, Taylor. You're gonna ask a question? Yeah, I was so. With shopping, like for food, right? I am very big on like my name brand foods and everything like that. So IGA was like my place. What but brand did you want to get? What, like, what you like, I want, I want Jif peanut butter. Got like, it. That's, <laughs> that's what I want. <laughs> you have Peter Pan. <laughs> right. I want Jif peanut butter. But um, so like people usually say, you know, if you don't go to IGA because it's expensive and there are other places that you could go to. Like I found a couple of places, but I would always probably just prefer IGA. I don't care about spending money on food. But in regards to you guys, how did you guys figure out like your best grocery shopping um, stores and that benefit you or you were more comfortable with using or utilizing? I realized like the first time I was down here, I was spending almost 50 US dollars a week 
so like $200 a month on food. Mm -hmm. And I always felt like I didn't have that much. And so I started venturing out more. Like I went to food fair, which is also another one that a lot of SU students use, but Mm -hmm. they don't have nearly as many brand names or the same variety. And like, once I got a car, like I just like started realizing like, I don't need the brand names. Like it's fine. And like, honestly, I started learning. I like to cook. So I learned how to make a lot of stuff from scratch. Like I was making bread. I was making pasta sauce. Like I didn't, I was like, I don't need these brand names, but it depends because then some people are like you Taylor, like, and there's like no shame in that. But I told them like most students, like I feel like 80% of people are going to use IGA. And that's just Mm -hmm. is what it is. Like whether you buy local or you buy brand names, but I do like recommend people who want to save more, don't mind it. Like go to the fresh markets and like go into the town to the random like gas um, grocery store. I've been to so many grocery stores. I don't probably even know like half the names because I'm just like (laughs) always somewhere, but it just depends. Like I have people ask me like, you know, do they sell vegan food? And I'm like, yes, but that's only going to be at IGA. Mm -hmm. But then also people ask, like, do they sell organic food on the island? And I'm like, most local produce is like homegrown in someone's backyard. So Mm -hmm. it's like as organic as it can probably get. So Mm -hmm. it just kind of depends on like your personal preference and like what you're willing to spend. So Yeah, I felt the same way. I'd like leave the grocery store and I get back and like unload two bags of stuff and just like, (laughs) I spent lots of money, but where's the food at? Like, (laughs) exactly. Yeah. Um, but, I, but I think I think the whole IGA thing is just because of convenience, because that's mm-hmm. the first stop. And it's just like everyone knows that place. But I think if I did have like my own transportation, I would like venture out more and stuff because I did. I do. And then take advantage also of, like the people who sell on campus, like mm-hmm. yes. some days of the week, there's a man that sells like produce and then like even fresh juices and like so like the eggs, eggs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Eggs. I forgot about like how many like two dozen or like it's a lot. Mm-hmm. It's a lot. Yeah. So there, like there's, and a half yeah, it's not hard to come across groceries or you'll find what you need to find. And then, but yeah. So I think the thing that was wild to me about the eggs is I think it's a very American thing, but you don't have to refrigerate them. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nope, they do Once not you have refrigerate to. them, you have to refrigerate them. But if you like don't wash them, they have a biofilm or something on them that's protective. So you don't have to refrigerate them. They're fine. Because that's really? how the eggs yeah, that's how the egg guy has so many eggs and he doesn't have them in a fridge. Yeah. So just wash them before you use them. I and no also food. like, also for like people who are staying down here long-term, like it's right in Grand Dance. All the buses pass by, but hardly anyone knows about it. There's like a, like a bulk store, like a Sam's or, a C- or, oh, yeah. Yeah. or yeah. Costco. Yeah, the CKs. And so like, I tell people like, I mean, I know you're not here for a long time, like a long time, but if you just like want a lot of pasta sauce or a lot of something, like you can go there too. So, yeah, yeah, Antonia and I have driven past there a couple of times, and we've always said we need to go in there. You know how you always say, "Need to go See, in there," and then we're going in there. <laughs> See, that's how I was like half the time. Like me and my girlfriend would just be out, and we'd just be like, "We drive past your place, this place. Like, let's just walk." And we would just like go up and down every aisle, and we'd be like, "Oh, look what they have!" Like, yeah. Even if we didn't buy anything, like just to see. So yeah but I feel like I went in there to like look for energy drinks, like Red Bulls or something, like in bulk, and you know you have your little like. um the app to convert your money I'm like oh that's kind of expensive so also yeah, people it's... like you could bring bring it lots of people bring their own snacks like bring stuff that yeah. you want to bulk up on yourself like if oh you can have like a whole suitcase of like your costco faves oh, i brought cheese it's when i found out in foundations <laughs> they didn't have cheese it's down here like the next <laughs> term i brought so many cheese it's down here so oh my god i had cereal yeah. in my suitcase i did too cereal because the cereal, cereal. Was expensive. <laughs> cereal i love cereal so much i packed like two i went to sam's and i like i had four bags and that cereal is probably so stale at in the apartment now oh my god i can eat cereal for like any meal like frosted flakes like all day long (laughs) i could too like oh my god i love cereal so much my thing was swedish fish that's like my swedish fish (laughs) i love swedish fish and they didn't have it on the island i could not find it anywhere i was losing my mind you know there's a store on in Container Park. Um, they have like a whole. They didn't have Swedish fish in there. No, in calls. I think that's what it's called. That's what it's yeah, called. Calls. Yeah. yeah. No. Really. It's it's so sad. Like when you don't. I mean, for me, when I don't use like a name often, it's like it goes from my memory. 
And it's like, gosh, why don't I want to know, use these words or use these names every day? Like, oh, I'm going to call. I'm going to get a coconut water and call. <laughs> like, nope. I just know. Going to Little Mexico. <laughs> I only know Little Mexico, Greek, umbrellas, and esters. Oh, no. we got to get you, you some know other rituals. stuff, Taylor. <laughs> I know. Oh, rituals. Oh, yes, rituals too. Um, I, what's that? I've never been there. It's right next door to Little Mexico. <laughs> oh, I have been there. Yeah, I got. I've seen it. I've seen it. I have. I had. I didn't get a chance to eat there yet. I wanted to. You should. Miss Pradima is like the sweetest human being ever. Her food is amazing. It's like Asian Indian fusion. It, it looks yeah. good. It looks really good. I'm always just like, I wonder what that people, is. She has I don't eat. Bo- I don't drink. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't drink boba, <laughs> but everyone says it's good. So they have boba there. Yeah, yeah. she has boba. <laughs> I never had it, but I always see people. I'm like, I need to have some boba. <laughs> never had it. I was there. I was down there for two weeks recently just to move out of my apartment, and I ate at her place a ton. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's called pakora. It's like a vegetable cake that she like fries, kind of. Oh my god, it's so good. Mm. What? So good. Wow. Okay. Well, since we're on the topic of food, what else? What other food spots? I was just gonna yeah. ask. Like, were you, you gonna ask? There's another person like close to campus. She actually used to work near campus. Her name is Nirvana, and she does pasta. And so now she has a little house like um, in Frequente, which is one of the little areas near campus. Yeah. And you can just drive to her house and like pick it up. Or she's on like the Carib Bikes delivery service. Like her oh. pasta is amazing. Shawarma King's also good. It's like similar to Greek, yeah. but like Greek. less pizza. Um, but shawarma like I always like shawarma like slightly better than Greek but like they're both like Greek and then outside of campus like I don't want to name everything because I want Lisa to put some input into it. Um, <laughs> outside of campus like if you want to like really really try some like home style Grenadian food I would go to Patrick's it's like going towards like town but like it's always good like at least if you go once while you're on the island um, I never got to go oh no it's so good and like there's one there's one thing that you can pay and they have like an SU student discount where literally like it's a taste of Grenada I can't remember the cost but it's discounted and like literally they bring you out samples of like everything and so it's like samples of appetizers um desserts like everything and like I think we went and we had like 15 different things and they're like tapas style Mm. um that's cool Belmont on the other side of the island is also good. They're like local and it's a chocolate factory. So you can also do a chocolate tour. It's just far. Like you would definitely need a car to get there. Like, Belmont? I Belmont Estate. Yeah. That one I like recommend so much, but like it's I know amazing. a lot of people just never get up there. And it's like all you can eat, like the chocolate experience, it's nice. It's like you get three courses, like so you get your soup, you all you can eat, like the main appetizer. You get a juice, you get dessert. It's like how great. do you how do you book this or reserve this for people who don't know? You don't have to. You can just, you just, go. just show up. Wow, okay. And you can cool. do a tour for like like five US dollars. Yeah, it's like five bucks. What? And the tour is so fun. They've got tons of animals on the property. I learned so much. Like I didn't know cinnamon was wood. Yeah. They show like, you cinnamon bark really yeah are they like like i remember we were walking around and like they literally just pulled lemongrass out of the ground and they were like smell this yeah. and it smells like lemons or like really? they show you the like chocolate part yes oh my god okay just as an aside if you get the chance to try it the fruit off of the like you open the cocoa pod and then there's like the beans which is chocolate like or becomes chocolate but there's this white pulp on the outside yeah. The best it thing. <laughs> is my favorite it tastes like starburst kind of but not artificial like it's because my favorite like what they, i remember they explained that like it takes up nutrients from the ground so like when you have like mango trees and other things around that it's mm. taking up that nutrient so like they were like it's always good that like if you want a good chocolate you want other good, good trees next, around it right so because I don't even like chocolate, but I that little like white part was amazing. Oh, so. man. Midterms, no, I had dark, like, green and dark chocolate, like, Curious, this girl this piled up. Different. This girl's different. So good with the nibs. 70% cacao with the nibs. Yes. That was my <laughs> I love the nibs. I put those in everything. I put you them like in chocolate balls. Oh, my God. I love them. You like dark chocolate, too, Liz? I converted when I was in Grenada because it's just, <laughs> it's so good. You don't need a ton of it. It satisfies your craving. It's yeah. Awesome like oh my god because I loved Belmont See, that's one of the places that mm-hmm. I would always take people when they would come down and we would also go to the um 
the rum, the river rum distillery mm-hmm. up there. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that, yeah. yeah. I would say for like for people who um, haven't got a chance to like visit Grenada yet or attend school there in person, like when we do, or if you ever do get the chance to go, like if you see uh, like a place with like maybe a food sign on it don't be afraid to just walk in and like mm-hmm. check it out like I feel like a lot a lot of things there's just people are just being like oh I don't really want to like especially if you don't see yeah. Americans or if you don't see students but you'll be fine like just there's check so it out many and, students like, that like never leave like the bubble of campus yeah <laughs> one of my favorite places is downtown and no one hardly ever goes down there and there's so much good food down there there's bb's crab back which i think people yes. do know about ish their, mm-hmm. their whole red that one's good is next level their ribs they have great. red snapper there red snapper their ribs are some of the best ribs i've ever had what's the name yes, of it like bb's crab back okay it's it's like if you're going down it's a dead end it's so mm-hmm. good make a and list taylor just, i am i'm ready like, to go to is schnitzel house yes i've, I've heard, heard of it oh i've heard I never of it to go. y'all it is so good it's like this it's a couple they're from austria i want to say um the guy he runs like the bar and the wife is the only person in the kitchen cooking she it's everything it's like all this like austrian german food the wiener schnitzel is like it's so and it's not what you would think of in grenada like let me go get some german food yeah <laughs> yeah and I mean, that's why like i don't want to that's why i didn't get it it's like oh i'm good <laughs> no it is so good like i've yeah. never had it any like i've never had german food that good mm. and there was like another place in town like called creole shack and like they just have like it was like cafeteria style you just go down and you like load up your plate Cool. And like, I remember, like, you could get like a plate, like, gushing of food for like thirteen EC, which is less than five dollars. Yeah, like, it's like <laughs> yeah, so much stuff. So like, there's definitely stuff. What did you say, Liz? Well, I was just saying what Brittany was saying. If you just venture, you can find stuff, and it is not you are not going to break the bank. Yeah, so and if you're writing down. I was going to tell Taylor if she's writing down. Write down Port Louis too. That's another really good one. <laughs> kind of like going into town. <laughs> Wow. Okay, this is Yolo exciting. Sushi. What yeah. is it called? It's they, well, I like the sushi place. It's called Yolo. Okay, I think you've I've heard. I've seen pictures Yolo of that. Yeah. Before. Did y'all ever try Antonio's? It was a new place that opened yes. shortly before that. They have like the best pizza in Alfredo, and I don't even like Alfredo. And their Alfredo was bomb. <laughs> their Alfredo was so good. Where is the Antonio's place at? Um, Near Grand Dance by IGA. Oh. You're the and like also like, oh yeah i have been i've been there with tone i got some dessert is it like the, the cafe too it's like they have cafe like maybe not because there's like a cafe with like espresso and like stuff like that um why can i think of the name but it's Bell- in that area yeah i think that's it yeah so is it in that area so i used to live there i used to live okay. up above oh okay so there's bella milano there's carib sushi, which is really good. Yeah, Shido they also have hibachi, hibachi. At the carib sushi. Yeah, but they call it teppanyaki. So yeah, the wanna- more you know, like this is blowing my mind. And again, I wanted to say just for context, like if for, if you don't know, to go into town, like into St. George's from True Blue, where campus is, is like might be a twenty minute drive. Right, so it's and not even, even if you don't have a car, like you could. That's like the easiest bus you can take because that's yeah. all they're going. They're going straight to town, and it's two fifty yeah. easy. That's less right. than a dollar. Like right, like fifty cents. Um, but yeah. like yeah, so that don't think like all these things are like full day excursions, like taking away from your study days. Like no, like you could go to the cafeteria place that Brittany mentioned, have a lunch break, and get back to campus and go about your business. You know, like it doesn't have to be like you know taking away from all your time like these are easy accessible things like most of the stuff you're mentioning is like in true blue and i really like like that you said like two cares like don't be afraid to just like pop in somewhere because like i feel like even like the places like me and liz are talking they're like very like popular with students but like there's other places like right in grand dance called grill master i mean most people pass by it every I've single been day there. to go to iga I've their been there. smoothies are amazing or like me- right there <laughs> I've like had so many, there's this couple that sells, they're from Trinidad. They sell doubles mm-hmm. outside every Saturday morning. And every Saturday that I've been here, I have gone to them. Like there, so like sometimes just stopping on the side is like good yeah. to like the beaten path. Like, <laughs> Let me tell you, I am an ice cream 
crackhead, okay? And whenever I got to Grenada, I was trying to find ice cream. I went to the little shack on on campus. I, I wasn't as satisfied with it, but I was like, I need a milkshake or something. And somebody mentioned Grillmaster, and I went in there and I got the shake, and I was like, bro, I'm going to have to walk back up there and get a shake because I can't ask someone to take me back because we just left. <laughs> Did you hear? Mango smoothies are amazing. What'd you say, Liz? Are you talking about Wee Papa? No, Grillmaster. Yeah. Grillmaster. <laughs> okay. They have they have like a, a um a, the food portion, and then as you walk in, there's like there's a, like a bar. Yeah, I've got <laughs> and it has the ice cream and mango smoothie. Yeah. It was uh, <laughs> interesting. Yes, we it was great. Food. Oh really? I heard that that place oh, was good for desserts. Well, don't they have one on in Container Park? That's what she's talking about. That's the one that closed. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. They also had one right next to Grillmaster. Yeah, yeah. okay. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I remember that. Wow, yeah. that was fun. I could, I could go all day about food. I love food so much. <laughs> so I thing I'll say about the island that I think is really misunderstood is people are like, what are you going to eat down there? There is so much food and so much good food. If you want Indian, there's great Indian food. If you want sushi, there's great sushi. If you want good Italian, there's great Italian. If you want pizza, there's pizza. Like it's not, you will not go hungry, I guess is my Mm -hmm. point. Like there is so much good food. And if you find good places, you can get really big portions for like not a ton of money. And then I just save it. And then I have leftovers. So I would get less groceries and it would take me, it would save me time and it would still be delicious food. Mm -hmm. That's some good advice. Yeah, I wanted to ask you guys as far as um, uh, living situations, um, like, I don't know, do you have a pet, Liz? Did you bring a pet there? I didn't bring a pet. I oh, acquired a pet. You acquired a pet, okay. So, like, yeah, so when, did you guys ever live on campus or if not, like, um, how is living off campus and stuff like that? Like, yeah. I lived off from the jump. Did you live mm-hmm. on campus at all, Liz? I lived on campus for term one and... I didn't like it, but I would also recommend it, which is kind of, I guess, sounds kind of weird. Why Um, don't you like it? I was 24, 25, going from my own space of like a thousand square feet here in Maine to... Oh, you're saying you didn't like it on campus? Yeah. I Got it. Okay. I thought you said off that much. It was like very small, but... The thing I will say is I did meet a lot of people and because you're right there, it was easy for me. It was a good like ease into Grenada. I felt safe and comfortable probably because I was around a lot more Americans Um, and my friends, a lot of people were on campus. So it was easier to just be like, hey, you wanna meet like here or there for go to Glover's, get a wrap, whatever. Um, But I wouldn't, so I, in that sense, I really liked it. Um, But I was also really excited to move off term two. And I also, like I said, I got a dog three weeks into term one where did it stay on campus with you no he stayed with amanda oh so she he was her foster Mm -hmm. someone had dumped him on campus like the previous Mm. april and so they had been fostering him but no one wanted him because he's a little older and he's a derm dog which i guess for non-vet people he has skin issues Mm -hmm. um so he just wasn't like a cute little puppy and I met him at a thing we did for Paws and she brought him and I was like, I like that dog. (laughs) And so I ended up adopting him, but she fostered him for me for term one. So the first day I had him was the day we flew back to America. And let me tell you, it went fine, but I wouldn't recommend it because it was super stressful. (laughs) Oh, so he, but he was amazing. Like he was such a good travel buddy. He was really well behaved. Yeah. Um, but I was just like, oh, I did I make a mistake? Like, what am I doing? <laughs> no, yeah. you love him. He's perfect. You love him. I'm I lived off from the beginning. I didn't mean to mm-hmm. cut you off. <laughs> no, yeah, no, you, have a, you, you had an animal. You brought an animal with you, right, Brittany? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I got my cat to lose my last year of undergrad, and I got into Ross and SU only. So I knew, regardless, if I chose Ross or SU, I was I was flying somewhere with this pit. So yeah. I lived off from the beginning in foundations, which like Liz says, it's a little more hectic just because on campus, like 
you know what bus goes where and like you can kind of see where it goes versus me like I remember my neighbor was like oh yeah you just go down to the bottom of the hill and you'll see the stop and there's no bus stops here oh my like, god yeah it's, not. Just, it's, it's just a corner <laughs> it's a bush yeah <laughs> so it's like you you start learning where the bus stops and you know the stops then but for someone new I was like I was just walking and then yeah. the bus kind of finally flagged me down and they're like oh you just stand here and I was like oh she said go to the stop and they were like no you just stand there and I was like oh and so like but the the only plus side is that I would say I felt like I learned the island quicker like yeah. I remember in foundations like my friends would be like oh where do we go and like I'd be like oh I know exactly where to go because like I had had to learn like you know on the weekends when the buses are running you know less or like maybe I wanted to go out somewhere like like I said I rode the local buses so like I just I just knew the stops like I learned all of the routes of the buses quicker because mm -hmm. if I needed to get somewhere I knew how to bus hop yeah. um but like Liz says like you don't I feel like you have to make more of an effort to make friends because if you want to come home you know everyone else is kind of hanging out in the dorms and stuff like that and then like you're trying to come home to your pet yeah. you know and it's just like so that was the only thing but it wasn't horrible like I I do recommend it like she's like Liz said like to new students like when they reach out to me on my YouTube I'm like if you don't have a pet like I wouldn't just say like go adopt one so you don't have to because it's not the end of the world and if at most after the end of the first term adopt a pet like that's it but mm -hmm. yeah I lived off the whole time okay like I said I'm not living with anybody I'm not living on campus I don't want to so me and monkey was on the plane <laughs> monkey exactly. does really well on the plane actually i'm actually so That's proud of her says. she's so it's not in your apartment yeah no oh my god <laughs> didn't you get another cat Brittany? no i fostered three kittens oh, they were um, and i i was so sad because when we had to evacuate like i still had in my head i at least had three more weeks with them so abruptly having to leave them i was like my babies like how yeah. am i leaving you um and then even now the when i came back down here there's only there were, there was one couple on my property they've been feeding three cats so now i have like three feral cats that i'm feeding right now um mm -hmm. they don't one of them will come in but like they normally just like meow at my door at night and in the morning for food but right. Toulouse travels well like he doesn't cry i don't have to give him drugs like he is just perfect like even in our layovers so we've had to stay in the um airport overnight we've had layovers at hotels he's just like whatever so, yeah with the flow yeah. when monkey when monkey yeah. comes out of her carrier it's game over <laughs> no such thing as i wish it's just i don't know what it is with me and cats but i don't that's what I'm saying. i did um ftv as well so i and i didn't bring an animal so i was on campus um for ftv and then i was on campus for term one as well and yeah i was like just kind of the same sentiment as, as liz like it, it, it's a little easier just because, you know, you're closer to like getting to your lectures. You don't have to worry about like getting up a little earlier, or, like, well, you know, you're, yeah, right, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? And um, every, all your study spots are right there. And like I me, mean, obviously you can study at home, but I like to study out of my room. Um, and I was gonna, I did secure a place to move off like term three. Two. Term three, no, term two, thank you, yeah. <laughs> But obviously, it's all blur now. <laughs> but obviously, I didn't get to go back. So, yeah, I'm going to make it happen, though. So, Brittany, how did you find your place coming into Grenada, like, without having to live on campus? Um, when I, so, I it was, like, fortunate enough to come, like, view SGU. It wasn't even through the CSU program. I didn't even know that existed until after I got here. But when I was here, they took the person on my tour guide was like, oh, get on this housing page. Like, that's the best way. And so I just, I mean, I didn't know any, I didn't know anyone coming down here. So I didn't know any of the areas. So it was just kind of like recommendations, but like, that was how I found it. And even now I still recommend students to use that Facebook page because you know, like most of the houses on there are from students. So even if the landlord or someone else, it's like normally they're affiliated with students as opposed to, I know some students will want to use like realtors and stuff. And I don't diss it because some people have found like good finds but like sometimes the realtors will like have somewhere close to SGU but like four miles here can take you 25 minutes to get to just because of how windy the roads are or sometimes like it's slightly off of the bus route and I'm like okay it's not far from the bus route but like you have to walk up this mountain of a hill like and that might take you 15 minutes so mm -hmm. I just recommend students sticking to the Facebook page because it's usually close to campus close to the routes reputable so that's how like I found it but yeah I mean I had a good uh 
um, experience with the realtor, like we found, reached out to him word of mouth. Mm-hmm. And um, he, we like this chat on WhatsApp and he came to campus to pick me up and then he'd take me to places and like, um, yeah, so I mean that 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 works too, but I mean I don't think you should also just like negate other options because like yeah, yeah. I feel like uh, some realtors are better and they know the areas, but then some realtors are just like, oh, look at this place. Yeah, it, like, it definitely depends. Oh, yeah. yeah, it depends like if they are like student conscious kind of thing. Exactly. Right. So, yeah. yeah. So Liz, how did you find your place after living on campus and then going and finding somewhere to live? I found mine because my friends lived there. So I lived at, uh, for a year at La Marquis, um, which was the roundhouses I was saying. Mm -hmm. And I ended up living by myself in a studio with my dog Hunter. Um, And I was a little nervous to live by myself just because of safety Um, and not because it's Grenada, just because I'm female and by myself can be a little scary sometimes I think Mm -hmm. um but I really liked it because they have an entrance to the building an entrance to your apartment and there's also 24 7 security guards um and I actually like the fact that there was kind of like all of those restaurants and stuff downstairs because every night when I would walk my dog I got to know the owners Mm -hmm. and so if I didn't show up one night or something they were probably gonna be like where is that girl like Mm -hmm. they didn't necessarily own my name but they knew me Mm -hmm. Um, so that's how I found it. And then I ended up moving just financial reasons. Um, and I found that place on the Facebook page. So I would totally recommend the Facebook page, but word of mouth is really good down there. And the only other thing I would add is there is a list. I have to remember how to find it, but there is a list of landlords that are kind of like blacklisted (laughs) uh, that students have had poor experiences with. So I would definitely recommend looking at that list before signing anything too. Um, just to make sure that many, but yeah, it's on like the, my course, it's on the, my campus thing. Yeah. It's really short. It's not. And honestly, like I had very, very few poor experiences with locals down there. So Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be that worried. Um, but it's not a bad thing to just take a peek at. (laughs) Yeah. So I know Liz, you spent a summer in Grenada. Um, was it the summer, winter? winter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I knew it was a break. So whenever you spent that break time down there, what did you, what were all the things that you, I guess, did you have like a list of things that you wanted to do? Did you have, like, what did you do with that time? My parents ended up coming down for Christmas, which was a big reason. Yeah. So we had Christmas in Grenada. Um, I did a lot of exploring, just driving around, um, went to the beach, um it was nice too because everyone that was leaving brought me their groceries so if you do end up staying over a break make it known to your class because usually they'll get free food yeah yeah <laughs> I, I I definitely donated a lot of food when we got this like kicked off for COVID and yeah. I was like I reached out like hey I have and I was so mad because I bought like I never splurged this one time I splurged on Captain Crunch I didn't get to eat it and I gave it to like a classmate who's staying but yeah sorry to cut you off yeah That's fine um but I did a lot of that kind of stuff. I also stayed because I had befriended um, some locals. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to spend time with them. Um, I think my nose ring is popping out. My apologies. <laughs> uh, but they own a place downtown called Art Fabric. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it. Yeah. It's on, is it High Street? I don't, a lot of the streets in Grenada don't have names or they do have names, but there's no street signs just as an FYI. Houses don't have numbers, separate issue. Um, <laughs> do you know where the House of Chocolate is downtown? Mm-hmm. Literally across the street is this place called Art Fabric. They do batik. Um, and it's a woman, she's actually from America and another one from Switzerland, I want to say. They're like the cutest, sweetest ladies ever. Um, they employ locals in the shop. And so I would go there and help them do batik. What's that? So I um, it's a form of pattern making where you use dye and wax. So yeah. you draw with the wax and then you put it in dye and anything that has wax on it um, doesn't take up the dye. So you make like a mirror image and then they have, they make tons of stuff that they make like um, jewel or not jewelry, clothes, purses, hats, scarves, tapestries, huh. 
and they also sell a lot of local artists stuff so they do sell like local jewelry local ornamental stuff if you want like a calabash bowl that's painted they sell all of that did you go to any of like the waterfalls or anything like that yes i went to which waterfall did i go to mount carmel mount, i think it's how you say it. uh-huh. that i went to that one um and it was amazing it was so pretty um i didn't do that over break um but i i ended up going like right after break because m- some of my friends came down early and we went adventuring um and what else did we do? I took my parents to Belmont. There's also this thing called the rainbow eucalyptus tree, which is like just on the side of the road, <laughs> but the bark grows and it's really colorful. So we did that. Really? Um, it's really pretty. It's really cool. I guess it's a certain species of eucalyptus. Huh. Um, yeah. I don't know. We just did stuff like that. And I'm a big person that just likes to like kind of drive around and like just like find random stuff and the other thing I found that was so nice is like the people down there are so nice they would see me like I remember one time very specifically we were trying to find river rum and we were lost and we just kept like driving up and down this road and finally these guys stopped us and they were like are you looking for the distillery we're like (laughs) yeah and they were like okay go this way and that way so I never had a problem getting around like even if you get lost like multiple times I had locals help me uh-huh. yeah they we I remember when we went into town trying to find a tailor and the guys tried to help us go in the direction to find uh to get there yeah yeah if like, you did they go for a break I would do it I would definitely be, want to I would be afraid I'm not afraid I, I, okay I would be afraid because I'll be I feel like I'll be bored because like I don't have I don't have a car I'm I, I know that I have to get myself used to the bus system. I'll get I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. But I would just be like, I don't know what to do. I just want to go to the beach and go to Umbrellas. And I don't know what I would do. Oh, I could hit up the taxi man. He could take me places. There's a really there's a really nice taxi man. Well, I can't remember his name. I said I was going to make him my uncle. Or rent a car. Like if you rent oh, a car, yeah. go up and go to the rainforest we did I did that a lot and there's a guy there who he's like befriended some of the Mona monkeys but he doesn't yeah, keep he them knows how to call them yeah but he doesn't keep them in cages he doesn't keep them on chains which like personally I will admit I'm very against I don't think that's cool and yeah, so I'm not like to pay those people but I'm okay paying him to because they're wild still but just bring fruit mm-hmm. that was something I learned like brings bananas or something because they get really mad. They'll slap you. <gasps> like, if you, you don't serious? get them fast, yeah, <laughs> get them fast enough or like something, they'll just like slap your hand. Like, hello, I want my banana. Thank you. Oh, yeah. And the first time, like, uh, Liz said, renting a car well, before I had my car, one day, me and my girlfriend were just set on doing stuff on the other side of the island. So we mapped out what we wanted to do. We so rented you, a car for 24 you, hours when and you then say, returned it the next day. Sorry, I'm sorry. When you say the other side of the island, does that just mean like, so? So we we are used to like driving that side with like Grand Anne's and then St. George's like Carnage. So when you say that other side, do you mean like over there, but like away from? Well, I mean up north, like the oh, northern oh, side of the island. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. over there. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, like the other there's coast. other there's other waterfalls, like Liz said. Like I've been to Concord, and it is on the opposite side of the island, like. So I guess to the West coast and then up North yeah. and then you have Annandale in the middle. I've been to that one. You have seven sisters. That's kind of up there by the rainforest too. Yeah. Those are both kind of in the center. Mount Carmel is kind of like on the side where Grenada, I mean, where SGU is, it's just okay. up a little more. Um, there's some other ones. There's like golden falls. There's like the St. Canyon falls. Like there's a lot. <laughs> there's like, Oh, maybe that's beaches. There's 42 beaches on the Island. Yeah. Really, and, and as, I, there's like twenty, at least twenty something waterfalls. And as far as like getting to the, let's say waterfalls, like is this something you can just like, um, plug into your GPS and like make your way? Like, ha- yeah. So how would how do you go about that? Well, like, 
I always tell people like kind of look at a map so you can just know the general direction, but like Google maps and like Apple like maps work. So like if you can find something that's near it. Right. But, and then like Liz says, once you get closer in the area, you can ask people like I know seven sisters. I go all the time. Once you get closer up there, there are like signs that say seven sisters, like two miles. And then there's mm-hmm. like a sign or like Concord. Like there was like literally like a post in the ground. It was like Concord falls this way. So like yeah. usually when you get close people like know and they're hanging around and they can mm-hmm. kind of guide you. And sometimes like there's like a nice hike with it. Sometimes right. like Annandale is like in Concord, it's like right there. But like mm-hmm. the hikes are like make the day trip too. Mm-hmm. I and I would that. like keep that in mind, like do your research before going because like I never went to Seven Sisters. It just didn't work out, but I know it's kind of a hike. And so people would recommend it going in the dry season versus the wet season. Mm-hmm. And like, cause it's less muddy. I need yeah. to redo Seven Sisters. Yeah. I jumped the last time I went. I don't well, know if I would ever do that again, but. You did all seven. No, well, so you, once you go up, like they say you hit a few of them. So I, they're like very short. So I don't know if those were like actually all seven, but I mean, like, yeah, I did a few of them, but, and then I did that final one. Yeah. That was the part that like, was like, no, mm when I went to Seven Sisters, I don't know what happened, but we got so lost. Like we did, we did not make it to like we got off the trail somehow, and then basically we're like, well, if we we made our way to like the river, and we're like, well, if we keep walking up the river, we'll hit the falls. Then it never happened. So we just, really? Like, walk, yeah. Maybe yes. you're going in the opposite direction. Maybe, but like it was fun, but it was just like we didn't see it. And it was just like us oh, no, you have over to rocks back. and like, yeah, I need to go back. But it was, it was good, which is like, well, we didn't see what we came here to see, but it was fun. You should also go to Mount Carmel, like Liz said, because it has like the big, nice falls. That's like yeah, super pretty. But then pretty... if you keep on going down, like there's the rocks you can slide down. Well, yep. yeah. And there's you can slide down the locals rocks? down. Yeah, yep. there's a, always like a lot of locals out there doing it. So if mm-hmm. you just ask them like exactly which part to go so you don't hurt yourself, like. Mm-hmm. And there's a guy around there like we paid someone a local as like a tour guide kind of I was happy to do it he was super nice and it wasn't expensive and he like it was really muddy and so he had us like get there safely yeah and he showed like he showed us how to slide I didn't slide because I'm not graceful (laughs) (laughs) yeah I definitely need to mark more of these off my list because I've only been well halfway to seven sisters and then um I think Concord is the other one I've been to yeah. Brittany, Brittany, I've seen a YouTube video where you jumped into the ocean. Where was that at that you did that? Hmm. I was actually at SGU. <gasps> mm-hmm. No way. <laughs> so there is a sign that says you no daredevil or swimming, but you know, me as many, many other students do it anyway. So yeah, you go kind yeah, of I think like, like Anthony oh. did that too. Yeah, if you go up behind Caribbean House. And you, it's a, it's a well demarked oh, trail. So oh, and you just that go area. Right yeah, I've been on the trail, but I never I mean, thought to jump. I would just not <laughs> well, jump on a day. <laughs> you're not supposed to, exactly. Because, like, if, if it's one of those days where the water is just crashing into the rocks, you're going to crash into those rocks. So, like, you need to go on, like, a day where it's just, like, kind of, like, like, nice. But when I know where some people in my class have white coat pictures jumping into it with their white coats on. So, wow. Yeah. I need to see these pictures. That's okay. Yeah. Um, where, did, where did you swim up and like, how did you get out of it? Because that's so a like big cliff. Of, that's not, yeah, so that's like not the, paid this lightly. This is a cliff cliff. It so is. It is. What if this is on a cliff? Once you get down, like there's a rock that's lower and it's kind of like one of those things like you can't just pull out. It's like one of those strategies you have to wait for the water the waves to to like help you you have to like yeah and then even then once you're on that small rock it's like a climb up to your back at normal level like the rock is like you're like pulling stuff up not recommended yeah yeah we we, we don't recommend it i would drown but i I would drown like (laughs) stick to the jumps at concord and seven sisters i would drown (laughs) i would drown just for the sheer this the panic of it (laughs) that's why i would drown i know how to swim but i would drown because what okay i thought that this okay me karis and antonio took a study break and walked over there and i almost fell down there so there's no way in hell i'm jumping off of that because <laughs> now that i know that that's where you were at i'm okay i'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> that's proud why of you though. signs that say do not jump. So. I'm, I'm proud of you though i'm proud of you okay so <laughs> this is going to be the last question that we asked um so for li- I'm gonna ask different questions for the each of you, uh, for each of you because they're gonna be different, I guess. So, 
Brittany, what's one thing that you would like to do before you um, say goodbye to the island? So one thing I wanted to do, like adventure wise, was go to the Sulphur Springs. But another thing like bigger that I want to do is that because I have my YouTube channel, like I know I'm always like showing what to do around the island and like all about SGU, but I want to do one like for the Grenadian people. So Mm -hmm. I thought about doing like small public interviews because that's like since my girlfriend's not here, my best friend's not here, I've been like closer to my local friends. And Mm -hmm. like, I've just learned a lot that like most students probably are like, unaware of and so I just like want to like bring more awareness to it and like show that like some people do acknowledge that type of stuff so yeah that's that's, like my last like thing to do that I want to do that's Mm -hmm. cool that would be really nice that'd be a good tribute I'd be interested in like what you could ask them I've like like I know like I have a friend who like I'm not going to say her name but like her mom's in the hospital and like Mm -hmm. the hospital's like you don't get food you don't get sheets you don't get pillows you have to bring everything for yourself and so like if your family members in the hospital, you have to find a way to get off work and bring yeah. them food every day. And their wow. visiting hours are like two hours a day. That's it. Ooh. So like now that's time off. My friend has to not work, you know, mm-hmm. to take care of her mom. And it's things like that. Or like, um, I've had a, like a lot of students tell me like, you know, they're our age and like how they don't like things the government is doing, even with the COVID vaccines and the COVID pandemic and mm-hmm. tourism and stuff. So like, I want to ask them questions like, what do they think, like, as a local and, yeah. like, as a, like, citizen of the country, as opposed right. to, like, us as students right. seeing, like, the sugar-coated version. Yeah, we're getting And, like, I want to, like, lighthearten it. Like, what do you love about Grenada? Like, what's your favorite part of Carnival? Like, I'm, I'm going to have some good, but I also, like, just want to, like, say, like, look, we're in someone else's home and, like, you don't mm-hmm. see, like, some of the stuff, so. Yeah, mm-hmm. their reality. Cause it's, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. We're, we're, we're definitely guests like we're not you have no ownership or entitlement to it like exactly we're granted access if anything okay that would be really cool i can't wait to see that okay liz yeah. i'm like your youtube channel what's the name of it oh it's just Brittany kilgore it's just my name like i never <laughs> like because I, you- I, I do too much stuff so i just right. keep it as my name <laughs> or if you like youtube sgu i'm sure she'll pop up her thumb yeah i will pop up. yeah <laughs> okay liz i'm i'm gonna ask you a sad question i'm sorry i have to though um what would what is the one thing you wish you would have done before leaving like you if you knew you would not have the opportunity to go back to grenada again what would you have done before leaving um well, adventure wise, the thing I'm really bummed that we missed is the Tobago case trip. Mm. Um, I wanted that, to do that. that. I do. <laughs> and so it's when you, for people who don't know, it's you can rent a sailboat for a couple of days and you go up to the Grenadines and you get to swim with the sea turtles and you go to the island where they film Pirates of the Caribbean. You sleep on the boat oh. like three days and you go with your friends. So I'm really bummed about that. Um, but I guess like on a more personal note, if I just knew we weren't going to be going back, sorry, I might cry. Um, just one last beach day with my friends. Mm-hmm. Like it's nothing major. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, it sounds a little dramatic when I say this, but the past two, like the two years I had in Grenada were by far the happiest and best of my life. And mm-hmm. I met some of my best friends and I'm just so lucky. Like, I'm sad right now, but I also feel like the luckiest person to have something that makes me this sad. And so I just think if we could just have one more day as a fit, like a vet family, that would be like mm-hmm. the coolest thing. Yeah, no, that's not dramatic at all. Like I remember you talking to us about pause and how like initially like coming to Grenada was hard. And at some point you had hit a hard point and they yeah. picked you up. Like those were your people. That's not dramatic at all. You yeah. get your people. I yeah. understand that. And become become really close, you know, like it's just we're all we have, not all we have, but like we're all we have on the island mm-hmm. when we're there. So it makes sense. It is. Um, it's all you have. Like we're and I remember when I because I like you said, when I first got there, I remember I got in the dorm room, closed the door, was by myself for the first time for yeah. like 15 hours. And I just started bawling. And I was like, what did I just do? Like I this was a mistake. And I was so scared. And within the first couple of weeks, I had to like be really open and honest with people who did not know me. And I had Mm -hmm. to take advance and be like, are they going to support me? Are they going to think I'm a psycho? Mm -hmm. (laughs) 
but they supported me and we got through it. And then I realized I wasn't the only one having those fears. Right. And like, it's, you do, it's, you only have each other. Like you can call your friends, you can call your family, but they're not going to understand what you're going through. Like right. your classmates mm-hmm. are, they just can't. And it's not a dig. It's not that they're not going to try. It's not that they don't, they don't love you or support you, but they just can't, they can't understand. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, we're like, we're excited for you to start clinicals and, you know, we, we, have, we have fond memories. So I want to thank you guys both for joining us today, reminiscing with us, talking about the beautiful island of Grenada. Um, and I'm sure even if you don't go back to school, you could go back on a vacation. Yes, oh, you, can come directly. you can come yeah. visit me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <obviously. laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, thank you. Go ahead, Kara. Sorry, I apologize. Yeah, I was just going to thank you guys for joining us. I know you guys are both really busy. I enjoyed talking to you guys. Um, yeah. And I hope thank this helped because it was helpful for everybody else who's listening. Yes, thank you guys so, so much. Um, Thanks for inviting me. Of course, of course. Thank you guys so much for taking time out, like Kara said. And yeah, we're going to wrap it up.